Good evening, folks. Welcome to the Weekly Watch List. I am your host, Jeff Kohler, a.k.a. The Option Addict, from over at www.tradingaddicts.com. Let's kick off this week's watch list with a little bit of market analysis. So, fund inflows at the beginning of the month. Maybe that sends the S&P up to that magical 1,000 mark that I think the market's been anticipating. Perhaps. I can see that happening. Being this close, I think it makes sense to be long into a print of S&P 1,000. As I look at the market, though, there are a couple things that stand out that are a little bit worrisome for me. Uh, number one is I, I got to make note of the weakness or the non-participation we've seen in tech stocks over the last couple of days, uh, primarily coming out of out of semiconductors. Uh, they they had a little bit of a of an upside response on Friday, but the lack of response on Thursday and just just tech in general. I mean, you you look at the last couple of days, you've got a couple of shooting stars up here while prices are significantly overbought. I mean, this is the biggest run we've seen in tech in quite some time. I don't know. I, I'm really worried about the lack of participation we've seen in tech stocks. And when you look at things from a longer-term perspective, say we go out to a five-year chart here, you you, you got to wonder if maybe this might be a spot to start taking a little bit of money off the table or at least getting a little bit underweight in tech stocks. Uh, in terms of bullish percent, there are no higher ratings out there. The bullish percent is the highest among tech stocks right now, which to me suggests if I'm looking for opportunities this week, I want to treat it on an individual basis. I don't want to have a real heavy tech theme as I approach the market this week. In fact, more importantly, I'm probably looking to lighten up a little bit. The one thing that does really impress me, though, and that stands out is the financial sector. And that was the biggest theme that we had last week over at Trading Addicts as we talked about buying into some of the money center banks as we saw the banking index or the BKX, we don't need to look at a five-year chart here. We'll just look at a two-year chart, and we'll see that prices last week, we took kind of an anticipatory approach to the banks looking for a break above that 200-day moving average, which is only the second time this has happened in two years. So prices got outside of that area. They continued higher. Uh, our big breadwinner, as we followed, was Bank of America, which saw a pretty good response, especially into the close on Friday. But I'm looking at the financial sector and I'm thinking, okay, well, if technology takes a little bit of a breather here, we need to see financial step up and play a bigger role in market upside if the market's going to continue marching higher. There was a really important development that I do want to throw out there, and that is the bullish percent, which went into bull confirmed status. Now, it did that at an overbought rating of 75, but nonetheless, that's still a pretty good momentum indicator, which might carry these stocks another leg higher. What I'm watching, though, and what's most important for me to get long, anything financial related, is going to be the XLF getting outside of this range, which it, it got to 1301 on Friday, but we need to see a little bit more upside, uh, and financials could fill in that void. Aside from financials, I think the onus is going to be back on energy with the OIH. I think you got to watch that magical century mark, 100 in the OIH. If that holds, I think you got to try to buy energy through here as that might be a trade. We might see those stocks play a little bit of catch up this week. But I, you know, right now I could be less concerned about direction of the market. We know prices are overbought, but it's a really hard bullish tape to fight. I'd be really focusing more on sector rotation, looking to get uh, you know, rotate a little bit out of technology, maybe looking more at energy and financials to step up and, and hit the ball this week. Now, as far as individual plays, as always, I'm going to throw out my dips, my rips, my breakouts and breakdowns at you. And I'll also sprinkle in a couple $10 darlings. Check these out. Now on to price patterns. If you're going to be trading price patterns this week, and we'll start with the energy patch, I think there's a couple things you want to look out for. Number one, you know, this activity around the 100 mark, if you dial into a 20 day chart, looking at the OIH, we're right at that number. I think if we get outside of this area right through here, to me, this looks like a nice little inverse head and shoulders pattern, which could point to more upside in oil service equities. If I were going to trade anything oil service related, what I'd look for are those stocks that are forming nice little pennants, nice little triangles. And let's take a look at a couple that I like. Uh, NBR is one. 
prices trade outside of this little pennant, this little triangle. Prices ought to continue at least up towards their highs. Maybe print 20 or so this week. CNX is another one that stands out to me. Same pattern. Prices already broke out of that range though, which you know this this train's already left the station. But you look at it from this perspective, also you got a nice little inverse head and shoulders play. So CNX, I think that's one of the better plays this week in the energy spot. If prices get north of 36, I think you got to own this. And also C&Q, which fits that same description. Nice little pennant right here. Prices broke out of that on Friday. Pretty good signal up here near the highs. Prices ought to trend a little bit higher, but at least 263 early on in the week. Now, a couple others that stand out to me in the financial space. I like Morgan Stanley to play a little bit of catch-up this week. You can see this little triangle formation that's been in effect for quite a while. Morgan Stanley still looks good, especially if it can get outside of that 29 area. So you're going to have to buy this higher. But by doing so, I think that confirms a nice easy move up to 32. Should be a layup if it happens. Also, PNC. A nice, long-dated falling wedge right through here, and prices are just about to tick outside of that. So look for PNC to play some catch-up this week, at least to test up to about the 200-day moving average, which you know prices ought to print 40 by the end of the week if the XLF breaks out. We can get to, we can get uh, into consumer staples. You can look at stocks like Pepsi, which have a nice little triangle that have formed. Look for a break of about 57 to get long this stock. Even the restaurants still have some pretty good price patterns that are forming. Uh, P.F. Chang's. Look for a breakout in prices to close north of about 34.35 this week for a long play. Uh, ticker symbol BVN, inverse head and shoulders pattern, and prices are right there. Just slightly ticking outside of that. You got a nice little bullish cross here. I think you got to buy this. You know, the metals and miners looked amazing on Friday, so that's, uh, that's a setup that stands out to me. NYX going over to the financial space. There's been a lot of controversy concerning some of the exchanges not really the NYX but more so the CME and the IS with the futures contracts but uh, take a look at NYX next week if you get a break out of this consolidation pattern it should be a nice easy run up to about 30 going into nat gas we've got PNY this one's longer dated you can see this one it's you can see this one from a mile away watch for a potential breakout this week nice long dated consolidation pattern got another restaurant here eat brinker you can see a nice little consolidation pattern as well there are a dime a dozen in the restaurant space and I like how prices are coming off of support like this nice little bullish cross down here on the stochastic to me that looks like an easy position to manage if you want to get out into healthcare, drug makers Bristol Myers is another standout name look at this on a one-year chart big time breakout I like the idea of buying it down but I just don't know if prices are gonna get back into that $20 range again so any kind of weakness down at 21 maybe even less than that I think that's a dip buying opportunity We'll look at Barrick Gold from Miners, ABX. Watch for a breakout of this pattern coming later on this week or in the next couple of weeks. Again, Miners looking pretty good. Going into wireless, I like this tandem, TNDM. You'll remember that from last week. We had a nice little breakout ahead of earnings, nice little triangle pattern, which accounts for a pretty big move in the stock. And we got that nice little bullish cross. Price is trading outside of resistance. I think you got to own that. I'm watching Buckle in discretionary. I'm actually long retail right now but buck has been trading pretty heavy and had a hard time getting above that 50 day so if prices can't get up there again we see another rejection you might want to consider a bearish position if the market starts to trade a little heavy as a kind of an anticipatory breakdown out of this descending triangle speaking of descending triangles you're looking for another bearish setup take a look at bar to bcr there you got another descending triangle as well long dated trading right down here near its lows for a stock that hasn't really been able to get up off the ground that's one to look to short Last but not least, I'm watching this FUQI. You might want to look at this dial into about a one-month chart or so. If the strength in this stock continues, I like this little ascending triangle pattern, which you can see it points to about a four-point move and the prices are able to break out. So I've got my eye kept on this stock as well. So a pretty big list this week. But I think there's there's plenty of opportunities here to play off of. Uh, one thing, just want to make clear again, I want to lighten up in the tech space. I want to look more to financials, especially if those stocks start to break out. And the energy trade is pretty easy to manage. Bullish percent still says we're right at middle of the road. We've got equal upside and downside from right here. But if the $100 mark in the OAH holds up, I think these stocks got to play a little bit of catch up, especially with the run we saw in crude last week where we're trading just under $70 a barrel. So that's all I got, folks. As always, I wish you the best in your trading this week. This has been The Option Addict. That's been my watch list. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Now, for only $300, you can sign up right now for my eight-week program. 
well that place was a rip off.